Building in a Small Town, where we're talking to entrepreneurs, community leaders, policymakers, and more to find out how they're building things in small towns. I'm your host, Shelby Smith. That'll be the first sound of this podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Building in a Small Town podcast. Today is the husband and wife special. Yeah. <laughs> I am joined by my husband, Willie Beeler, aka uh, also known as Richard Beeler. Didn't know that's his first name. Goes by Willie. But if you ever hear him in a professional context, he goes by Richard. Don't ask me why. That's my name. (laughs) That's what it says on my driver's license. So anyway, uh, we had a week. We had a a week that has a story that is a week that I never thought. Never thought. I was still in a little bit of disbelief that it happened. Um. It's already passed my mind. I, it's <laughs> there's too much work to do, so it just it happened, and it's almost done and over with. We'll see what the future brings. Um, so basically, I assume now you want me to talk about what happened. Well, do you want to start? Yeah, I'll start. Um, so it would have been Monday, not early Tuesday morning. Some uh, tweakers decided that they wanted my stuff more. They they decided they needed some of my stuff more than I needed it. And the stuff included my truck, my dump trailer, my Toro Dingo mini skid, a sod cutter, and a couple battery-powered Husqvarna um, demo saws. And um, so at 2 o'clock Tuesday morning, they hopped in, started it up, and off they went. <laughs> So I, I was up a Tuesday morning. Um, I can't remember what I was doing. I was in the shop. I had my coffee and my, had just made my electrolyte drink and I was just walking out to hop in my truck and get moving on the day and it was gone. I'm like, Oh, did I park somewhere else and forget to put it in its spot? And so I kind of walked around and didn't see it and um, came inside, yelled for Shelby to come down, and I'm like, we got a problem. My truck is gone. And I guess I don't really remember her facial expression, but it was just like, a, oh shit, that's not good. So, um, well, Shel- I remember your facial expression because I, and I think. I don't think I was downstairs. I don't think I was upstairs. You were I, upstairs because you came I? down. Okay. Yep. Well, I, you were like white as a ghost and your eyes were giant and you're just like, we have a really big problem. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember this, but my first words out of my mouth were, are you sure? <laughs> like, did you, like thinking you didn't, like, did you, are you sure? Because <laughs> I just, I didn't ever think that. And then you walked out to look and it was gone. <laughs> trust but verify um yeah and so then i told you i told you i would call the sheriff and you call the insurance agent and so that's what we did is i called i called the sheriff's non-emergency line because it's you know the truck's gone it's not emergent at that point and the sheriff uh they proceeded they started taking some information and then they had to put me on hold Um, because they ended up with like eight calls at the exact same time. Um, so I ended up on hold for probably 10 or 15 minutes and ended up actually having to call them back. In the meantime, you called your insurance agent to get the ball rolling on a claim because... Yeah. Well, so I, I remember that conversation pretty well (laughs) and pardon my language, but... Told him what happened. First thing I asked him was like, how fucked am I? Because, <laughs> I mean, I knew I had full coverage on my truck, 
which my truck isn't worth a whole lot, but might as well get as much out of it as I can if something happened. And I knew my trailer had full coverage and, uh, the dingo, the sod cutter was a rental. Um, unfortunately I'd hadn't updated my policy since I started my business. So I didn't have a blanket coverage on the tools. Um, like the hand, the, like, yeah, yeah, like my DeWalt stuff and the the saws. Um, so basic, basically, I mean, I was they they had estimated they were they were rolling down the road with eighty thousand dollars worth of stuff, <laughs> and like I I told multiple people, you know, I figured at some point someone would bash out one of my windows and and steal some of the stuff sitting in the back seat, but never. Never take the whole thing. I mean, that that's a pretty bold act on their part, especially to think that they could get away with it. Well, and you also, it's not as if, like where you park your truck and trailer, if you're just driving down Main Street, it's not like overly conspicuous. It's not, you can't see it. You know, it's not a, um, you know what I mean? Like it's not super obvious that it's sitting there. Yeah, so it obviously was staked out. So had to have been. I mean, it is what it is. Um, we have some ideas of potentially who it could be, or but we're gonna. Yeah, we're not. not gonna, we're not gonna, not gonna throw those that. around. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, uh, talk to the sheriff, talk to the insurance agent. Uh, my mom screenshot some videos of my like social media stuff that had pictures of my truck and trailer and the dingo and, and got that pushed out on social media. I pushed that out on social media. Yeah. Well, I Shelby got that pushed out on social media. And so we got a Shelby got a message from someone saying they thought they saw our truck and we went and looked and it wasn't our truck, but they gave the wrong location or no, something. no, no. So what happened? Um, so we called the sheriff, we called the insurance agent, the, uh, dispatch for the sheriff said, we'll send a deputy over. Unfortunately, like the two available deputies or whatever were on the opposite side of the County, which is always kind of how that happens. And so they were like, it might be like an hour until they get there. I think they ended up there way sooner than that. But in the meantime, I had posted to our like Collins community group. Hey, does anybody have like footage on main street? our truck and trailer got stolen overnight. And then, um, at that point I went back through all of the pictures and videos of stuff that I had put up for social media to try and find pictures of the truck, the trailer, the dingo, like as much of the stuff separate as I could. Cause we didn't know if we were going to find everything together, if it was going to be separate. And so I put that stuff up on the business page and shared that out everywhere. And, um, it was, before the deputy showed up, I think. I can't remember. I don't remember the timeline of that exactly. But I got a message from a woman that said, hey, there's a, a truck and trailer that showed up here in the middle of the night, like on a dead end by where we live. And she sent the address. Now, I don't know what address, like I don't know what happened between my fingers looking at that Facebook message and putting it into the GPS, but I put the wrong address in. So they gave me the right address. I put the wrong address in and we ended up like 15 minutes away near Maxwell, which interestingly ended up like on a dead end road. And there was a silver truck, <laughs> silver truck, but it was hooked up to a horse trailer uh, and was nicely backed in where it was supposed to be backed in. So I was thinking that was the one that she was talking about. I was like, oh no, we came and looked and that wasn't it. Um, and in the meantime, the deputy came, um, took all the information, serial numbers, VIN numbers, um, you know, just general description of the stuff so he could get that report filed and started. And then he grabbed the footage that he could from, um, from Darren, from our city worker and left his card with other people he did basically did like a walk around of the area to see where who had cameras where and then like knocked on their door and left a card and was like hey can you check your footage from mm -hmm. you know this time um but then he left shortly thereafter he was here maybe an hour i would say 
left shortly thereafter. And then, um, in between that time we got, I got another, I got a Facebook message, uh, from a neighbor here in town. He lives just up the street and he said, like, yeah, I'll, I'll let you tell this part cause I wasn't. Yeah. So he said, um, I was, he was up in the middle of the night. It was having trouble sleeping or something. And he heard your truck turn on, which for those of you who have never heard Willie's truck is really loud. It's not like obnoxiously loud. It's not. It's loud. It's just a diesel pickup that's straight pipe. If I don't go revving around, it's just. Sounds like a semi, essentially. <laughs> yes. So it's distinctive in its sound, though, is my point. Is it's something that when you hear it, you like you know it's, you know who it is, essentially. And so, well, and they probably had to rev it up to get it to start. Yeah. Because if you're just sitting there with it, you got to give it just a little touch of gas or throttle to get it to fire. Yeah. Now, since I run that truck every day, I can start it without revving it up i can just get it to pop off but i'm sure they were turning it over and mashed the the throttle and made so more noise than what they normally I would, do. would right <clears throat> so that neighbor like i said heard the truck turn on and then he which he already thought was w- weird because it was 2 15 in the morning and then he also heard them start attempting to drive and he said he knew that it was not you because they were like grinding through the gears they were not um they were not driving it well (laughs) shall we say and so he uh had the wherewithal to call 911 to call dispatch walked out of his house saw you know Did did he see the truck did he see them i don't know that he saw the truck i don't know i don't know I don't know. Okay. Um, I, he said he heard it. They pulled up and idled outside of Snack Shack for like 10 minutes, he said. Probably YouTubing how to drive a manual or something because they didn't know. <laughs> but um, so he was able to describe this suspicious car that he thought was a watch car at that point to dispatch. And the deputy was able to pull that over so there are some names and things attached to that and again we're not gonna not gonna go there but um it we thankfully probably have some pretty solid leads just because of his like i said his yeah call i'd like to talk to him and see and just get more context on the situation because if they were sitting out there for 10 minutes i'm sure he popped his head out and or maybe not i don't know I mean, I don't, he lives yeah, right there so well, so the the car that he called in had to have been the car, the spotter car, the car that they drove to get get here. Yes. Um. So I don't know if there's any way they can tie that together with my stuff. Um, going yeah. Missing, but. But so anyway, so we got that message from him, um, and we forwarded on the deputy deputy's information so that he could you know relay that because there had been a shift change between dispatch and all that stuff so we need to make sure that everybody was communicating and that we knew that that car was potentially involved and so uh fast forward is maybe like half an hour 45 minutes after the deputy left he called us and said that he and a detective were on their way to what they were pretty sure was our truck and trailer but um and that we would need to meet them there and lo and behold it was the same address that the woman had sent me earlier uh i put it in the gps correctly this time um and it turned out to be about three miles from the building yeah three or four miles northwest more west west northwest yeah so they had well we believe they were headed towards nevada or somewhere north. Yeah. Um, so they ended up on a dead end road that had like an old one lane bridge that was out of commission. And the road was downhill. And they couldn't, you could tell like from the tracks of the, they were spinning out. They were trying to back up the truck and trailer and they just 
couldn't do it and you want to talk about the neighbor the guy there was an acreage right there do you want yeah. to talk about what he said yeah so there's a there was an acreage and the woman the woman who sent me the address via facebook messenger earlier she's one of the ones who lived there but i talked to her husband uh after the deputy left and everything um and he said yeah at about 2 30 whoever it was spent like 10 minutes trying trying to back the trailer into his driveway and he said he kept killing the truck like kept killing it couldn't drive a manual and couldn't back trailer up like oh for two on that and finally got so frustrated and just pulled straight forward uh he said you know he didn't call it in at the time he just thought it was a some drunk guy which, you know, you live on a dead end road where the bridge is out, but on GPS, it looks like it's still intact. I got to imagine it maybe wasn't the first drunk that could have potentially wound up there. Um, but so he, he said they pulled forward. He never heard another car come get them or anything. So we think they probably left on foot with the saws because those could be carried by hand. Um, but essentially ended up with the trailer like halfway in the ditch. Well, so their their last attempt was to back the like jackknife the trailer into the ditch and then they started unhooking the trailer from the truck. But somewhere between them not being able to drive a manual, um, they they ruined a mechanism on the, the clutch hydraulics. Um, it's a safety switch. And basically all it does, it's just a spring loaded mechanism. So when you push in the clutch, it makes it so you can turn the truck over. So the ignition works well, somehow they messed it up. So the truck wouldn't start. So they basically had a, a dead vehicle. Dead, dead they, horse. Yeah. So they couldn't, couldn't start it. Couldn't move it. I mean, they could have shoved it forward and maybe who knows if they had their own truck that they could find to to get the trailer so they basically you know shot themselves in the foot by not being able to drive it and so when we showed up when we showed up to the crime scene it was just like in the movies and the tv shows like the dude was dusting for prints and taking dna and all that stuff and And photos of everything so um i guess that was kind of interesting i'd prefer to not experience that ever again but so anyways when um when we got there and when they were all done and when I tried to start the truck I figured it was the starter I figured they since they kept killing it that they burned up the starter and I've burned up plenty in that truck um, likes to eat through starters for some reason and so I had it towed home and put a new starter in it and the starter wouldn't work so then I figured it was probably the the safety switch and so I got that figured out and truck runs fine. Um, I was really worried about the truck because just with what it is, it's a diesel pickup that's turned up with bigger turbo and everything. And if you're not an experienced driver, um, if you don't have never driven anything like that before, it's really easy to burn up the engine. So I was like thinking in the back of my mind that these guys probably either melted a piston or blew a head gasket or something. And thankfully uh, that wasn't the case. So the, the old girl's a little tougher than, than what I thought. So, so yeah, I mean, everything's all good and dandy. We had the only thing we're missing at this point are the two saws and aren't your like electric cutters. No, on. those were in the bed of oh. the truck. So, yeah, they uh, they didn't get any of Carter's tools because one of my employees was in Arizona, so I was hauling his tools for him, but I was sure to let him know that his stuff was safe. Yeah. Um, so they left, like, the, so they took the two, their two Husqvarna uh, battery-powered saws. One yeah, of like them concrete you, saws. One of them you just bought. Yeah, one I just bought. Um, one was, So the older one is a little 9-inch saw for for uh, c- like cutting curves and paver patios and we don't do a whole lot of paver patios so we hardly ever I mean we used it every day until I bought the bigger saw because the little saw only cuts like three inches and most every material we use is four inches thick 
Instar Equipment had a promo on these big 14 inch battery powered saws, and I was like, well, we'll just buy one. Um, so bought it. But the funny, I mean, the ironic thing is, is these are battery powered saws. They left the chargers in the truck. Now the batteries are the most expensive part. Um, and my big saw has two batteries. Both my saws have two batteries, but the more expensive battery was in the saw. So that, that's unfortunate. Um, had a new blade on it. So, and, the, and then in hindsight, the, do you want to explain yeah. the GPS thing or whatever? So the, was it yesterday? Yesterday, day before. I think it was the day before. I think it was Friday. So f- Friday afternoon, I'm out back of the shop working on, like I was dying those, um, the seats for those chairs. The star equipment salesman pulls up in his truck in the alleyway there and hops out of the truck. And I said, hey, are you coming to bring me some new saws or what's the story? And he looked, he said, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't know I was supposed to do that. And I said, oh, no, no, you must not have heard. And I told him the whole thing. And he said, well, you know, Husqvarna has an app that if you have serial numbers and stuff and you put it in the app, like it'll, it'll tell you the last place that it was triggered, that it went. And so I got like super excited. I texted you. I was like, oh my gosh, did you know there's this app? Uh, We have serial numbers. Like I'll just, I'll download the app. Did you get the serial numbers for the batteries? So I only got the model numbers for the batteries. Oh. I know. Um, Cause I called Brandon and he gave me everything, but what he gave me, it was like, it was not the serial number of the battery. It, I only had the serial numbers of the saws. So I was only able to pair the saw in the thing, but beside the point. Well, so, but couldn't we contact Husk? Could, couldn't we dig a little deeper and maybe, so we just need the serial numbers. We don't need to. So I thought, and that was Barry at the time. He was like, well, let me double check. Never heard back from him. That's okay. Um, you didn't tell me that part. Yeah. Uh, never heard back from him on, because he was going to ask his Husqvarna guy, because his Husqvarna guy would have known for sure kind of thing, and then never heard anything from him. But um, so I put. Well, I'll keep that in mind next time I'm buying, <laughs> looking for a piece of equipment. Yeah. Well, um but so I did a little bit of digging on my own kind of a thing and trying to figure out like what I could see and what I couldn't in the app as it was. And what I think it is, is that if when we had bought it, if we had Bluetooth synced it at the time, then yes, we would have had GPS location on it. But because we never synced it, I don't think we do. I think we should maybe... Yeah, a little deeper in that. I agree. I think I do too. But the other thing is too, I don't know. I don't know if there's going to be like a location history, you know? So like, let's say that they hit the trigger on it and set it off the day of. If at the point we find it and get it paired and everything, like, is it going to go back to that one? Or do we have to hope and wait that they like set it off? After we've paired it. I don't know. I can call Barry or Brandon on Monday. Yeah, I would call Barry. Um, I mean, that kind of doesn't make me feel super great. Yeah. That he didn't follow up. follow up with that because, you know, I've probably spent sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 there in the last, Yeah. you know, maybe not 60 or 70, but let's just say at least 30, I've probably spent $30,000 there in the last couple of years. Yeah. So if... Well, like I said, reserve your judgment. I will ask. Um, I will ask. I have his card. So, but yeah, so there is maybe potential hope with the, with new technology that there's something like that where we could end up kind of like an air tag situation and know where it is. Um, but yeah, it, it, 75 of the $80,000 worth of stuff came back. Um, the sheriff and quite frankly, us, we were also, I think I was really surprised. Didn't take any of the DeWalt stuff. All the DeWalt stuff stayed. The sheriff basically said, if it says DeWalt or Milwaukee on it, it's usually gone. Like automatic. Um, 
Yeah, so either they were panicking and... I'm sure. Yeah. Because there was probably, you know, $800 worth of DeWalt tools in there, but they... Yeah, I'm sure they were panicking because you got to imagine, you know, that house is not very far from where they were. And I imagine if they woke people up, they maybe saw lights come on. Yeah, I wish that dude would have called the sheriff. I know, at That'd the time. Awesome. Yeah. But I mean, it, yeah. At the time. It is what it is. Yeah. When all this was going on before before we, before my truck was found, I thought for sure, I figured my truck would show up because, I mean, it's a very unique, you know. Identifiable. Yes. I mean, it's not like lifted with sweet rims, <laughs> but it's just like it's, We've got new it's, un- it's unique. So I um, figured that would show up, and but I thought my trailer and dingo were toast gone but not forgotten (laughs) and that trailer was custom order and so but we got it back so that's the important part with relatively minimal damage yeah well zero damage i know well one of my rims is bent but who knows it could have always been bent yeah well and i think yeah given the situation it was probably one of the best outcomes that it could have possibly been there's a lot of a lot of luck involved yeah but then you know prior to all of this happening the week before you had covid and we're like dying you were not not well yeah and then the first day i felt fine i hurt my back yeah was... and so that was monday he hurt his back and like almost couldn't move um and then woke up on tuesday and i think my first words to you on Tuesday morning, because I was up and moving before you on Tuesday, which is kind of odd, but you were not getting to the job site until later that day anyway, Um, and you were headed to a new job site, like, so you were starting a new job, and um, I remember my first words out of my mouth to you were, how does your back feel? And you're like, good, fine, a little, it's a little sore, but, you know, nothing like it was yesterday, and so I had gone... I'd started, I already had my first cup of coffee down and everything, and I'd actually taken a video of the back, back there without your truck, but didn't realize that the truck wasn't there. Well, you took a video of the back? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the empty lot? Uh-huh. Yeah, because I was going to start this series about like 36 days until this store oh. opens, like this would be a before picture, like look how... I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like maybe 10 15 minutes before you came down or before you came in and we're like my truck's gone i already had taken a video but had not realized that the truck was not there so (laughs) oops shows you how observant i am um but yeah so then uh the detective and the deputy were there for gosh we were there for an hour and a half two hours it seems like dustin for prints all over the place um and all that kind of stuff and then they ended up leaving and then not 10 minutes after they left you got a phone call oh yeah someone trying to extort me (laughs) some georgia phone number called me saying yeah we i know i know who took your your equipment or he's like i'm calling about some stolen equipment i know i know who did it and i know where they live i was like okay like let me I'm gonna get a go get paper. a pen and paper. I didn't say that. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. We have it back, but so, anyways, I it's like okay, I'm gonna go get a pen and paper, and I'm like, who am I speaking with? And then he just hung up on me. Said he'd text you and hung up. Yeah, or he said he he said he would text me the names and addresses, and then then I asked who is this. And then he hung up, and then it took him like it took him forever to text me. And he had this big long thing like saying like, I know who, I have their names and addresses. I don't want no BS and this and that. And that he wants $200 and I go settle up with the people. And and then he wants more after I get my stuff back. I was like, what? Like, how would that even work? I don't have Venmo. Like, do you want, he said he wanted 200 cash. And so... 
did this guy want me to go meet him? Because I, I automatically assumed that it was someone that was involved. And so he wants to meet me face to face after they tried to literally steal half my business from me. Yeah. So. Well, anyways, they didn't star six, seven, the number or block the number or anything that way. So I immediately, after you got that call, called the deputy and gave him the number. And then he said, you know, if they do end up, because they hadn't texted us at this point. And he said, if they do end up texting, like forward me the screenshots. And so I did. And then the deputy said, I think you already know this, but don't give them anything and we'll check into that number. <laughs> and so um, it very well could be somebody who was involved or, you know, like I said, we did, I did put that out on social media and it got shared quite a bit. I think it ended up with a pretty far reach. Yeah. And I got like 50 or something, a lot, a lot of likes on my Facebook page. A lot of likes and new follows. So thank you for that. Uh, silver lining, shall we say. But so, um, he said it very well could be somebody saw that Facebook post and then your phone numbers on Google, you know, when you Google Beeler Line yeah. Landscape. So it's not as if it was difficult to track that stuff down. So it could have been a scammer completely unrelated and somebody just trying to extort extort you essentially that is not related and that didn't actually have any information or it could be somebody who was involved um either way we have your phone number dum dum so yeah <laughs> not a whole lot of brain power happening i don't think in the whole situation um but i did we should also mention like the amount of people that shared it, that friggin' offered us equipment, you know, offered us trucks and trailers and saws and... Yeah, competitors and... Yeah, people, other landscapers, you know, we had quite a few reach out to us and say, and very genuinely offer up yeah. equipment. I mean, we would do the same in well, this situation. Well, we would be willing to do the same. We, we don't have the capacity really to... I mean, they could use the blue truck, but that, yeah. you know... Yeah, well, and if that's what... yeah was the difference between them being able to, you know, function as a business and not. I just thought that was pretty cool. I think that's, you know, pretty solid of people in the same business. Yeah. Yeah, people that have been through it of, you know, know what it's like to start with nothing. And build something. Yeah, which, I mean, that's just... It's crazy. I mean, I know, I know times are tough for people right now. and Meth is a hell of a drug, but, too. But, you know, to, to literally try to steal $80,000 worth of stuff that would literally cripple another person's way of making money to live. I mean, that's, to me, that's a pretty intense crime to commit. Yeah. I mean, we're $80,000 worth of stuff. Just poof, gone. Yeah. They they want it more than I do. So I guess in all these recent events, you know, my, and also, you know, just being a business owner, my mindset of, you know, how things should be done have changed a lot. In terms of, you know, economy and Second Amendment and all that stuff. Having the right to defend your life. Um, because to me, if if those people have, if those criminals have the, the balls to do what they did, I think they'd be willing to break into someone's house. I mean, yeah, personally, but I don't know. It's a... Uh, it was just an interesting, interesting few days that we've had. Bit of a wake up call in yeah. some ways, I think, um, which is probably a good thing in some respects, and that it that it didn't end up as bad as it could have, I guess. But I would also like to not repeat that for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, I don't know. Um, so yeah. It was, it was not fun. 
And not expected. Well, and also put us two days behind. I mean, it didn't just affect me. It affected my employees. I mean, they yeah. missed two days of work. And and they were two beautiful days, too. It was like 75 degrees yeah. and sunny. As a, and like as we have, you know, heat indexes of 108 staring us in the face for the next three days where, you know, productivity won't be as high. You guys won't be able to work as many hours as you would have on those two days. Like, there is reality of that, too. Yeah, so these criminals, they cost me $2,000 and lost work. And, and yes, the job's going to get done. But every day that we can't work, that's another project that we can't get done before it freezes and snows. Um, And then, you know, that probably took about $500 out of each of my employees' pockets, too. So. I guess if uh, if we do catch the people, um, probably seek restitution for oh yeah that at least yeah well I mean and that's those are easy things to log and everything else like that's not a but you know and we've had this discussion already with the deputies like we can seek restitution but the ability to pay. Like, you can seek all of the restitution yeah. that you want, but... But it, I don't know if they can garnish wages. I mean, who knows if these they don't people have jobs. ever get real jobs. Say, they don't have jobs. They don't have assets. Like, there's no... Just making assumptions here, yeah. you know, of the caliber of human that would do something like this. Like, you're not going to have a job. You're not going to have any assets that could be seized. Like, so, you know, we What about, can, like, their uh, social security? I don't... Well, I don't think that... And I think that requires you to have a job and to have paid in at some point, you know? Yeah. Well, so this whole thing has also made me reflect on, like, those type of people. Like, how do they live? I mean, like, how, I mean... One one drug score to the next. They really don't care. Like, you know, and that's... I've had conversations with people about that, uh, you know, about tweakers and everything that way. Like, they're not thinking, you know, what are the long-term consequences of whatever action I'm about to take. They're thinking about, like, how do I get high neck? Like, how how am I going to get enough money to be able to score right now? Well, they could have bought a lot of drugs with... <laughs> They could have gotten that, in the distribution. But then game. they then they would have. I just know they would have sold that stuff uh, for nothing. pennies on the dollar of what it's worth. I mean, it doesn't matter now, but yeah, it just it just blows my mind. And you know, at one point in my life, you know, lived in poverty, and I mean, I know what it's like to not have much. But just get a freaking job. Like everyone is hiring. I'm not trying to sound like the, you know old grumpy dude on the AM radio that talks about Trump and the wall and this and that, but like, just get a freaking job. Like everyone is hiring. Everyone needs help. I know gas is expensive and groceries are expensive, but it's not that hard to, you know, be a productive member of society. Yes. Yeah. And, but that just, you know, comes down to, there's so many factors, you know, after going to, college to be a teacher and being involved in school systems like mental health and all that is just it's complicated yes it, yeah uh, so I guess there's really no no telling why well I mean obviously they wanted money but the thought process of just like hey I really wanted I want my own dingo well just like you know most everywhere is hiring for 20 bucks an hour or so put in 50 hours a week you get some overtime you be able to have your own dingo before you know it yeah brand new one even then i'd also like to you know talk about the the, you know there's that whole movement you know like to fund the police and everything but so now i've i mean i've never experienced anything like this and i didn't know that there were only two deputies on yeah that were you know in all of story county yeah um at the time, yeah, there were only two deputies out. Yeah, so I've I've never interacted with police in this manner of like me being the victim. I mean, I've been pulled over before because they thought I was drunk driving and I failed a sobriety test and I hadn't had anything to drink. I blew double zeros and 
And the reason I failed the sobriety test was because I had severely sprained my ankle and had to balance on that ankle and do like the ABCs backwards. And, and then I still got an $80 ticket out of it because, um, my window tent was too dark. So anyways, <laughs> I mean, that kind of, I mean, that happened a long time ago and, you know, obviously stuff like that put a bad taste in your mouth, but you know, it, it makes me wonder if the local authorities have the time and resources to help me when I need it most of getting my stuff back and catching the people that did it. And I don't know if that, if they have the time and resources to do that, which is really sucks. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'm making any sense for the point I'm trying to prove, but like we, we need local law enforcement Yeah, and they need to be funded and they need to be paid appropriately. So they need enough staff to be able to do what they need to do. Yeah. That being said, like I um, now had Jason not been up and not made the call and nobody got pulled over. I would say that we had like less than 10% chance of ever yeah. anybody ever getting caught with this, especially because the amount of stuff that left was really not that much. Um, so the odds of, you know, something coming up for sale on something or being pawned or whatever would be really low. But I think because there's at least some names that sounds like some frequent flyers that those sheriff deputies, the deputy and the detective already knew them. Um, I think that the likelihood is maybe over 50% and maybe I'm just being overly optimistic um, you know, they've said to us multiple times, it's like what we can, what we can prove, you know, is what, that's what they're limited on is like what we can prove. Uh, so, well, they definitely w won't have an alibi for being in Collins, the people in the car, because who are they going to say they were visiting at two fifteen in the morning? Right. But I, there's probably, Otherwise, there's, what's probably your, yeah, there's, there's no reason to be here. But yeah, so there's probably not enough. I, I don't think, I personally don't think we're, they're, we're going to know who did it, but they probably won't get her, be able to get arrested and yeah, I tried. Know. But I don't know. But, I have uh, a little more confidence in it. But, and it's just, I guess it comes down to if they can get some clean prints and the share or the detective said that. I can't remember what he said, but yeah. Um, well, it's, I think it's that I think, I mean, we do have video footage of them from a couple of different angles and things like that. So it's, it's not as if there's nothing, but like I said, it also helps that there were names attached. We also, like, I feel like you wanted it to be done. You wanted an arrest to be made like the day of, but, you know, they have to run the DNA stuff. They have to run the print stuff. Like, that takes time. Labs take time. Yeah, well, I don't, I mean, I would prefer them to be able to build a case and gather evidence. Yeah, so, so that there can actually be some consequences. But I'm probably. also curious, and we may never know, but let's say, hypothetically, they'd figure out who did it and gather enough evidence for the crime that they committed. Like, do these people get put away? Do they get a slap on the wrist? I mean, if they're frequent flyers, how? why are they out and about, you know, doing this? So, yeah. I mean, do they actually get put away or do they kind of say, hey, don't do this again? Yeah. Yeah, quit doing this. Which they still have the key to my truck. Yeah. So that's the... Key to your truck and key to your car. I think you have the car. Yeah, the car is worthless, but... <laughs> So, yeah, um, it's been a really interesting experience all around. I feel like we've learned a lot um, in a short amount of time. Maybe not. Yeah, I'm also curious to what the sheriff, you know, with stuff like this that happens. I mean, I straight up told him, I'm like, look, I under, like, I don't anticipate ever seeing this stuff ever again. Yeah. So I don't know if other people are like, you got to go get my stuff. Like <laughs> this is the only, only thing that you need to focus on is yeah. like, get my stuff back and catch them. And I was just like, look, whatever. 
sucks. I mean, I know you're going to try your best, but yeah. just so you know, I don't think I'm going to see this ever again. And I asked him, you know, I was like, for my insurance agent, do I need to get the ball rolling on Claim. getting claims and replacements? And he just said yes. Mm -hmm. So because in my industry, I know it would not be hard to offload that the trailer, the dingo and the sod cutter truck. No, but the truck was the least valuable part of the, the whole setup. So. Yeah. Anyways. <sighs> It'll be fine. All right. Is that enough about that? Did you guys hear enough about that? <laughs> I think everybody probably heard enough about that. All in all, though, if you uh, happen to be in Central Iowa area or surrounding area and are on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, keep your eyes peeled for a Husqvarna. What is it? K1 Pace. K1 Pace. Um, it's a 14-inch demo saw, like for cutting concrete or, you know, pavers. Another one. I don't know the model. It's a little 9-inch, just like a little little guy, a little baby saw. Yeah. So. That one's like a K3. 380 or something i can't remember brandon gave me the gave me the descriptions and all that so just keep your eyes on that one if you see a really good deal for those um chances are <laughs> yeah it'll be a third of yeah what, of what it should be that little saw is a 20 2400 dollar setup and the big saw is probably closer to three thousand. yeah so so yeah just keep your eyes peeled for that <laughs> Otherwise, you know, just uh, keep your doors locked and doors locked, guns loaded. Um, even if you're in a little small town, unfortunately, that's the times we live in. But, yeah. Anything else? No, I don't think so. I mean, like we've joked about before, thankfully my truck is... It's not held together with duct tape and zip ties, but it's... But almost. <laughs> it, it, it The vehicle is safe. It does what I need it to do, but it's finicky. She's particular. And so you need to be an experienced operator to run it. And also the when the sheriff asked if the employees, <laughs> the employees took it, Shelby literally laughed in his face because the, they can barely drive their own cars. Yeah, that was... So there's was... no way that they could drive because that was the first question that the sheriff asked when they showed up was any any employees or like discount disgruntled former employees that maybe could have done it and i did i laughed i think you said that i said that they can barely drive their own cars but that didn't come out of my mouth i oh. just laughed and said no <laughs> there's no way there's no way sorry <laughs> love you guys you're great but no would never. Yeah, they're they're great kids. They're yes. Uh, effort is never a problem. Yeah, they do what they got to do. But they couldn't drive that truck. No, and even even if you gave them, even if you gave them, like the perfect YouTube instruction, it still couldn't. There's no way. Well, I'm sure the people that stole it have driven a manual vehicle before. Yeah, maybe. But so I mean, this one reason why it's so difficult to drive is because it's got like a heavy dual disc clutch. For towing heavy, it's probably like for drag racing or sled pulling even. And so like that is another aspect of difficulty. Complication, so, yeah. But anyways, enough about that. It ended up working out. Um, so, yeah. All in all, uh, we hope to have a better week this week. And I will be back with another new episode the next week. It was just, I had, I had intentions of, so I had intentions of getting something recorded the week you had COVID. And then I decided that that was probably not prudent for me to record. I ended up not having any symptoms or something um, miraculously. Um, but so I, uh, so I didn't record that week, which is why there wasn't a new one last week. And then I was going to do one this week with somebody, not you, but then your truck got stolen. And we got to deal with that. So I felt like that was enough excitement for that week. And if we could do a podcast this week, great. If we couldn't, whatever. But this ended up being a good story. So um, hopefully this week's better. 
Yeah. So are we going to talk about the other stuff? Mm, no. We can do that but next week. Is that week. rattling for too long? or No. I just think, I mean, this is a almost hour long episode already. So we can just, maybe we'll just record this next, we'll do it next weekend. We can talk about it next weekend. And I can get one recorded in the meantime with somebody else too and we'll get it figured out no we'll save that we'll save that this is a standalone sound good anything else for the people no if you have any landscaping needs this fall we have yeah, availability. We have availability this fall if you have a project that you'd like <clears> done <throat> in central iowa we'll roll up with the we got to pay for two new saws so or at least one. We just well, I did. I did see one on Facebook that was the um, promo price. Actually, a hundred bucks cheaper over in Iowa City. So don't buy it because I'm going to maybe. <laughs> okay. All right. Well. Okay. Until next time. See you later. <laughs>